marriage an institution for security this aspect was not spoken while we were speaking on various aspects of marriage and dimensions beyond marriage is verily an institution of security social and religious sanction in case of muslims it is a social contract and other religions like hindus christians and so they give it a religious sanction marriage as an institution is a dead and meaningless it has been given a religious sanction all marriages hindu and christian are performed in the name of god but there is nothing like godliness in it the society has given it the status of an institution but you cannot live in an institution remember only mad people live an institution and there is no need for me to call those names marriage is used as a word as a substitute for love love is dangerous to be in love is to be in a storm completely love is like breeze when your hand palm is open it touches you the moment you try to encompass it close the fist the breeze is no more to be in love is to be in a storm constantly you need tremendous courage and awareness to be in love you are to be ready for anything there is no security as far as love is concerned love is most insecure marriage is security because the office of the marriage registrar the police and the court of law are all behind it the state the society and all other institutions even religion is behind it marriage is a social phenomenon love is individual personal and intimate it is an unseen but realized truth it surrounds you but yet still you cannot see it you have to be vulnerable to see the energy of love as it flows love is individual personal and intimate love is dangerous and insecure and nobody knows where love will lead love is like a seed no one knows what will happen when the seed blossoms there is every possibility for seed not to attain flowering for the seed to blossom a certain mechanism is needed so to for the flowering of love certain understanding awareness and a way is needed certainly not marriage instead meditation is the way for love to blossom when meditation deepens your heart center becomes activated and that is the reservoir where energy of love is stored and from where it flows it flows all around like the radiation of the sun your heart or kal becomes the sun that shines irrespective of who is there and who is not therefore love is dangerous and insecure and nobody knows where it will lead to it is like a seed no one knows what will happen when the seed blossoms there is every possibility for seed not to attain flowering for the seed to blossom a certain mechanism a certain ground is needed the preparation of the ground the centers 
below the heart, prepare the soul. So too for the flowering of love, a certain understanding, awareness and way is needed. And marriage is not necessary for love to blossom. When meditation deepens, love blossoms like this myriad suns. And that is why it is called Buddha's compassion. Love blossoms in the soil of meditation. Life attains some meaning in meditation. Love is just like a cloud moving with no destination. It is a hidden cloud whose whereabouts remain always unknown. Nobody knows where it is at any moment of time. It is unpredictable. No astrologer can predict anything about love, about marriage. Astrologers are very, very helpful. They can predict. Meditation gives love a ground, a direction, and nourishment for the ultimate to happen. If your love blossoms in the environment of meditation, it has a different quality, different texture. It will have a ground, a direction, and nourishment for the ultimate to happen. The society has to create marriage because man is afraid of the unknown. Naturally, whenever any question, any choice comes to choose something that is unknown, you have gone to party, a dinner party. Many kinds of food are there displayed on the serving, serving table. You choose only that which you are familiar with. If somehow these foods are available free, there is a possibility that you can try. But if you have to buy these foods, about which you are not familiar, very rarely you will venture into that. So society has created marriage because man is afraid of the unknown. Whenever a question comes of something unknown, your first reaction is no, oh no. Then maybe on a second thought, you can say, okay, I can give it a try. On the level of life and existence, society has created substitutes. For love, marriage is the substitute. For real religion, I should use the word religiosity. For religiosity, there are sects. They are like marriages, Hinduism, Mohammedanism, Christianity, Jainism, these are not real religions, instead a substitute for the real. Real religion has no meaning. It is like love, unseen but realized truth. But because love is dangerous and you are so afraid of the future, you would like to have some security. You believe more in insurance companies than in life. Life is uninsured way of living. Life has no insurance. Anything can happen any moment. Life is uninsured way of living. That is why society has created marriage as security. Marriage is more permanent than love. Love may be eternal if you do not know its real essence. But it is not permanent. There is a difference between eternal and permanent. Permanent is plastic life. Love may continue forever and ever, but there is no inner necessity for it to continue. It is like a flower that blossoms in the morning and by evening it withers away. It is not like the rock. Marriage is more permanent. Rock life. You can rely on it. In old age, it will be helpful. 
it is a way to avoid difficulties. But whenever you avoid difficulties and challenges, you have avoided growth as well. Married people never grow. Lovers grow. Because they have to meet the challenge every moment. And there is no security what will happen. They have to create an inner phenomenon. With security, you need not bother. To create anything, society helps in the process. Marriage is a formality, legal bondage. Love is of the heart. Marriage is of the mind. And something of the mind, Buddha is not interested in. Religiosity flourishes in the soil of heart. But sometimes a master encourages you to get married. Marriage is a hell, but sometimes people need it. What to do? So he has to, to get into the marriage. They need to pass through the hellishness of it and they cannot understand the hell of it unless they pass through it. I am not saying that in marriage love cannot grow. Certainly love can grow in marriage only if there is meditation. If meditation is the base, that's why I say meditation is the missing dimension in every aspect of life. Whether it is work, whether it is job, whether it is education, because when you finish the university education is spending 25 to 27 years, precious years of your life, you come out of the institution with credentials and degrees and it is said, now you have the credentials to plunder into the world that lies ahead of you. I ask a simple question. When you come out with all those degrees and so, do you have this answer to simple questions that life asks you on a day-to-day -day basis? Life is the greatest institution. It creates circumstances and situations for you moment to moment. And if there is meditativeness, you can find the answers the very moment when the circumstance and situation impedes your way. Therefore, sometimes a master encourages you to get into marriage. It is hell and sometimes people need to go through to know what it is. I am not saying that in marriage love cannot grow. Certainly love can grow in marriage and in anything only if meditation is there as a background. Meditation is an understanding that comes to you. First of all, meditation brings an understanding that we are all made out of the same stuff. You breathe the same air that I do. If two people are in a room in a closed room, the, meditation, the meditativeness brings an understanding that we are breathing one another. The air that is inside the room is created by the inhaling and exhaling of the persons inside, number one. Number two, you may not like the other to touch you. But you may be sitting on the same couch. So both of you are touching one another. You are standing on the same ground, touching one another, yet still you are antagonistic to one another. Meditation brings this understanding. It is not a ritual that you sit down for one hour and meditate. As you traverse through life's roads, Moment to moment when circumstance and situation comes, what is your understanding in dealing with the other person? Someone gives you a bad ride. You are the owner of a car. 
you may get the car slightly damaged by your effort. What do you say? Oh my God, I got a hit. But if it, you give it to someone else and he does it, you say he does not know, he or she does not know how to drive the car. That's why I never like to give him the car. And in some cases you may have to say that the person has to pay to fix the car. I see this happening on a day-to-day -day basis. People claim that they do hard meditation, deeper meditation, but there is no effect of meditativeness. If your effort to meditate does not bring an understanding, synergistic harmony, then you are not meditating, instead you are doing something else. Yes, we are all part of one harmony, working towards one common goal. Our objective is the same, but we, have, we are assigned different roles to perform. Take for instance a simple act of cooking. In cooking that entails the various things. Bringing the vegetables and other ingredients from outside, someone to wash it and prepare it, then the chef has to cook it. You may do it all by yourself or you may take the assistance of each one. And you have to remember that the role that one performs helps in the process of attaining the final product. Therefore, if there is an understanding and because of that understanding as harmony comes in, then love can go wherever it is. Irrespective of any obstructions, love can grow in marriage only if there is meditativeness. But there is no necessity for it. I am not saying that in love marriage cannot grow. Certainly it can grow. But there is no necessity, no logical necessity in it. Allow the meditation to deepen it. Focus your attention on meditativeness, it will bring a different kind of understanding, an understanding from within and with the understanding harmony comes in when there is no conflict within you, head and heart work in harmony with one another and there can be no better melody then that when head and heart work in harmony with one another, then whatever commands come out of you, that has a mystical effect on anyone who listens to it. The words that are coming out during this session, they are simple and ordinary words, but because of the harmony between head and heart, these simple words are woven in a, like a musical note and that creates an effect that can bring about transformation in anyone who listens to it, anyone who understands it. Life will attain a new meaning. Therefore, do not miss the dimension of meditation. And through that, you generate a different kind of energy field around you that will protect you moment to moment from any kind of problems that may encounter. You are driving, all of a sudden there is a breakdown and because of your meditative energy, you will realize that someone comes to assist you. Always it happens because when you are in that situation, a message goes to the existence and existence brings someone to help you at that moment of deep necessity. This is the promise 
of the existence. Whenever you need me, I am there to support you. You have to create the background for that to happen, to listen to the small whispers when it comes.